Welcome back to Pentiment. We are headed into the secret library because it is during Compline. If I go up these stairs, it's going to take a while to find the records I need. I'll lose some time tomorrow morning unless I turn back now. We're going for it. The game's passage of time is interesting. And I wonder if that's going to, like, hurt me. Because isn't his wife coming or something, the, the barons? What's this? De Herbis Cambriae. The writer is Cadphilus of Salopia. I don't believe I've heard of him. Mugwort and Butcher's Broom. I'm not familiar with their properties, but they sound extraordinary. A beautifully illustrated book, and the author appears to be speaking from his own personal experiences. A wonderful hidden treasure for the Abbey. See, I'm probably missing out on going to the mill, which I guess is someplace where... Oops. I don't want to go there yet. Which I guess is someplace where people also come out of at night. Okay, so we go up here. There we go. <laughs> a little drunk walking. What do we have here? A bit folium taken from a larger text, the Mysteria Astra. I'm not familiar with it. Some sort of astronomical text. Seems rudimentary, explaining the connection between astrological signs and the elements and their basic relationship to alchemy. Each sign is governed by one of the four elements, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces are water, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo are earth, and so on. I don't know what the symbol for Sagittarius is, so there you are. It cuts off there. The next page is about something else entirely. Sister Illuminata must be trying to reconstruct the larger text. Describe and illustrate by folia out of page order so the shift of subject isn't surprising. It would make more sense once it were bound. Those two pages were interesting enough, I suppose, but quite basic. Oh well, they can't all be Aristotle. Ooh, what's this? Get. This is most curious. Historia de Labrinthio Laborum. Hmm. I believe a Bolognese professor told me a tale about such a place in Piedmont. Somewhat hard to believe, to be honest. That old man was quite a storyteller, I must admit. Well. Aren't I eventually going to be at the top floor and get in trouble? Like now? This looks promising. The Familiars of the Sisters of Kearsaw Abbey. Yes. But okay, the cursor movement kind of sucks. Mother Catherine was the first to enter records. It looks like almost 50 years ago. Sister Hildegard from the Goldridge family in Ravensburg. Quite wealthy. Looks like she became the prioress after Mother Catherine. Ooh, Cecilia. Sister Cecilia. Adelheit. Oh, this is Mother Cecilia's record. Oh, my goodness. Wait, she's from the Welser family? Eh. They're one of the most powerful families in Augsburg. Looks like her family donates a lot of money to Pearsall every year. More than my family sees in ten. Indeed. Sister Gertrude from Hoff, the herbalist. Yes. Her father's an apothecary. That explains it. This note says Sister Matilda left the Abbey for several months. Why would she go to a hermitage? Seems strange that she's the only entry with such a note. The date's three years ago. This was just before Father Matthias died, which means it was around the time Baron Rothvogel Roth visited. I should ask Sister Matilda about this, maybe Mother Cecilia as well, because heaven knows, Mother Cecilia loves talking to me. 
Matilda Oblate, yes, the nun's seller. She came from Kempton. Merchant family, they donated pigments to use in the scriptorium. Quite thoughtful. You do that. And. Oh, this should be interesting. Sister Illuminata. Named Angeline from the Capocci family in Peruvia. Looks like they have some connection to Kearsaw through an old abbot, Rudolph. Her family donates money to the Abbey every year as well. Oh, did I not... Oh, shoot, was I supposed to go further? Oh, no! I'm gonna get caught, aren't I? You look shifty. <laughs> what? wait for them to finish and leave. It can't take that long, can it? You should speak with them openly in good faith. That's been a reason. <laughs> Run for it. Go, go, go. Um, they'll notice, but can they catch me? How fast can two monks run? Alright. I'll wait. Oh, this is our little fantasy land. Andreas, when are you coming home? Dad, I'll be home soon. I need to finish this commission for the Abbey. I'm a little nervous about this girl, Sabine. Good, good. But finish that masterpiece, too. It's time for you to get on with your career. Yes, of course. You're not going to quit this like you quit university. I quit university? No! If it weren't for the book I did for the rector, you never would have had the opportunity. Most people never get a second chance after they throw something away like that. Oh, no. Andreas... I'll see you when you get back. Sure, all right. Oh, Sabine. Oh, it's you. I only have the picture of you, the one my brother Daniel made. I really don't have any idea what you're like. <laughs> are you really that pretty? Do you really want to get mad? So, what are you like? Please don't imagine me telling you in your own mind. <laughs> You'll imagine I'm wonderful or imagine I'm horrible. Either way, it's not fair to me, is it? The painted you, the imagined you, the real you. To none of us. I'll see you soon, Andreas. For real, I mean. I suppose that's true. Until then. It has been too long since you have graced this court with your presence. My mind has been preoccupied by a tragedy. Here's how Abby. I have like my own imaginary world. I have a nobleman, a close friend of the Pinko Bishop of Vicing. My friend, Brother Piero, is the abbot's only suspect. I know he could not have done it. How do you know? Examine your assumptions, my son. In addition to having no motive and violence not being part of his character, he's not physically capable of the act. He's of limited strength and has a palsy in his hand that makes holding a paintbrush difficult. A whole lot of inconceivable shit happens on this hell of an earth on face. I just don't believe he could have done it. There has to be a better explanation. 
I do not deny that it is possible, but I leave it, believe it is extremely improbable. So what do you intend to do about it? When I'm brought before the Archdeacon, I'll tell him what I know about other people who had motives to kill the Baron. I have to believe they'll see they're much more likely suspects than Piero. Why am I taking this upon yourself? I have to save Brother Piero's life. There's no one else to help him. I'll find the real killer. If the Archdeacon investigation threatens the Abbey, I want to protect I want to protect Piero. Your love for and devotion to him speak well of your character. A man who is humble before his elders also honors also his gods. Of course, you'd say that old man. He's right, though. If Andres doesn't help him, no one will. Why does this shit for brains get? <laughs> I'm too hard on the abbot. The Baron had many good qualities. Well, I can't disagree with your assessment of him. Powerful people get upset when other powerful people are murdered. This could threaten the existence of the abbey. Oh no, the abbey! Who gives a damn about those empty glass holes? In any case, Andreas' ability to prevent Pierre's death depends on the judgment of the Archdeacon. Wiser, foolish, corrupt, or just, the Archdeacon will be the first and possibly final arbiter of Pierre's guilt. Andreas must win the Archdeacon to his side using the tools favored by men such as him. Wisdom. Wisdom can be shared, but the audience may not comprehend it. Honesty. Must be honest in all things, Andreas, but many are not willing to accept the truth. And the cost of honesty can be high. Reason. When's the last time you met a man who was truly ruled by reason? Well, that's true. Despite your talent, you're merely an artist. He has been invested with the power of, by the Prinko family. You have no authority with him. If reason, wisdom, authority, and honesty cannot drive, what am I left with? Hope. Lies. Truth. And faith in providence. Not what you plan to tell the Archdeacon Andreas. There were other people in Kearsaw and Tassin who had motives to kill the Baron. The widow of Kemperin despised Lorenz for maiming her late husband. Maimed how? The Baron beat him savagely following an argument about trespassing on the Kemper's farm. He needed a cane to walk. Died a year ago. Otilia is certain because of the wounds he received that day. My understanding is that it was simply an argument about trespass that got out of hand. And now I suppose that she will lose their home. My apologies, his home. For what reason? Should an aged widow not live out her remaining days in peace? She didn't squeeze out any little kempers for old Ranning, so away the house goes. Because women must fight to own property, we exist on the sufferance of men. Perhaps if more men understood our just anger, the laws would change. A good man does not sit idly by while just force around him. What the hell is a half-trained artist with a half with half a university degree going to do against the might of the Holy Roman Empire? Well, that's true. You have established a motive for the window, but there is another matter that requires inquiry. While women and men are equal in most natures, women are weaker in strength. How could a woman of a Tilly's age overpower, uh, overpower her homie? Doesn't it seem unlikely she could have stabbed the Baron with his own knife? Lucky Steinhauer hated the Baron for the death of his daughter, Beatty. He seduced her and made her certain promises about their future together. And then... Bad stuff happened. <laughs> what led you to this conclusion, Andreas? I saw him pray at a secluded grave near the old salt mine in the woods. Carved in the gravestone were the words, Two Innocents. Surely Lucky and Agnes could have found a man to marry her. She was hardly the first woman to have been abandoned with child. The town would have accepted her. Even if that is true, it must have been distressing to be abandoned by her seducer. Certainly some of the town would have judged her for it. Who cares? What does it matter? You're a man, a nobleman. Yes, it may not matter at all. Quite different for the poor woman. 
Paul understood that we are all immoral. He said that it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Whatever the rest of the town thought, clearly Lucky didn't hold it against his own daughter. It's certainly more complicated for women than it is for men. Perhaps Lucky thought that unfair. If she couldn't bear the consequences, she shouldn't have lain with him. Uh, let's go with that. He's married to the village midwife. Who would know better than most the hardships faced by unwed mothers? His first daughter also married young and expectedly, did she not? Yes, Brigitte married Martin quite young, though now he's run off as well. So yet another woman has been left to raise a child alone. Do you believe Lucky would have killed the Baron to avenge his daughter? The desire for revenge is easy to condone. Is Lucky physically capable of wresting the Baron's knife away from him to stab the man? Yeah. I saw him lift massive stones by the church. Later, he was killing fish by slamming their heads against a rock. My other task seemed to tax his strength. Killing Lorenz would have been easy for him. Are there any others you suspect? I found no other suspects. One more thing to consider. It will be summoned to the Archdeacon to tell him what you know, but you need not tell him everything. I think I understand. There is a place for a noble lie. This is not one of them. Why? The Baron is dead. All the people with a motive to kill him suffered, either directly or indirectly, from his wickedness. Simply mentioning a name to the Archdeacon may endanger them, whether they had anything to do with the murder or not. Right, no point throwing everyone waist deep into shit, hey? I protest any attempt at deception, but you must ultimately follow your own conscience, Andreas. Little time remains before you must stand before the Archdeacon use it wisely. I have faith in Providence. Until we meet again, Andreas, God be with you. So does he have just this, like, little kingdom in his mind? Good lord, how long did it take them to finish? <laughs> Tris, wake up! Are you here for the books or for me? I was walking in my sleep, a book the library is so poor. Uh, Brother Pierre doesn't have much time. Quite noble of you to risk the abbot's wrath by breaking in here. Oh, I thought so. The Baron seemed like an interesting man, not that Mother Cecilia would let any of uh, the sisters talk to him. Was he interesting? He was had a great appreciation for art, which, as an artist, I also appreciate. I appreciate art. Could you help me deepen my appreciation? Uh, you're not. <laughs> Nothing escapes your artist eye, Andreas. That's why I like you. This abbey is a dungeon. I'm trapped here with pious women and old men probably for the rest of my life. Look, this is the only chance we're going to get to do this. So pull your head out of your ass, all right? You hear Lumali coming. <laughs> You're going to regret this. Uh-oh. Oh, God, protect us. Sister Luminata, come quickly. Someone is sleeping behind the bookshelf. Uh-oh. How did you find your way in here? Andres was lying in wait behind the bookshelf and tried to take it. What? You little... I do not know who to believe here, Andreas. There's no good reason for you to be in this library at this hour or any hour. Then again, I know Sister Zedana to be an imaginative young woman and an inveterate liar. But why are you here in the first place? You scared Sister Zedana half to death. I was hoping I could find some clues. That could help me prove Brother Pierre's innocence. In the library? What could possibly in here that could help with that? 
I'm not sure. Do you know why Sister Matilda was sent to a hermitage around the time of the Baron's last visit? Did he get Matilda nice and pregnant? It's not appropriate for us to discuss any further. You should speak to Sister Matilda and Mother Cecilia. I can't speak with you? I'm sorry to tell. In case you've forgotten, you shouldn't even be here. Please leave immediately. Of course, I am sorry for the trouble. Come, Sister Zidana, we have work to do. Yeah, he got Matilda pregnant, too. Andreas, there you are. Brother Wolfslav, what's the matter? It's the Archdeacon. He's come early with an entire retinue. Uh-oh. He's questioning everyone who knew the Baron and Brother Piero. I've already told him the little I know. He expects to speak with you today at Nons. He requested you specifically. I went to the Gertners at Vespers to try to warn you, and you never showed up. Where were you all night? Why? No, never mind. Just don't let the abbot find out, and don't tell the archdeacon. Anyway, he's questioning everyone in the chapter house, and he's keenly interested in you. It's no secret you've been poking about the town and the abbey, sticking your nose in the rot. I hope your prime has borne fruit, or Piero's neck will meet the sword. Only I had had a couple more days. Whatever happens, Piero knows you've been working on the, been working hard on his behalf, and he's grateful for it. Only Andreas, what is it? It's just you know as well as I do, the Baron was not a good man. I'm not saying he deserved what he got. Just you think hard about what you tell the Archdeacon and who you tell him about. You understand? You need to worry. I found nothing that implicates you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout. You don't deserve that. Well, thanks. All I'm saying is, is if in your searching you heard anything about a certain sister, I'd ask you to keep it to yourself. I'll do what I can to protect Sister Matilda from censure. I will pray for Piero's deliverance tonight. You should as well. Hmm. Let's see if I can get a hold of the nuns. Before it is too late. Alright, before I go speak to the nuns, we're going to end the video here. Another cliffhanger with the Archdeacon in town. If you're enjoying the video, Please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see here, and hit the bell if you want to know when more Pentiment and other videos for series come out. I will see you next time. Peace out.